welcome to Dad Tech. Today we're reviewing a full Sonos surround sound setup for the two home theater soundbar options Sonos currently has on the market. During my Sonos Arc review, which you can check out here, I mentioned that this type of surround sound setup, especially starting at $1,800 for the fully kitted Sonos Arc with the cheaper Sonos One SLs and climbing all the way up to almost $2,500 if you want to pair the Arc with the Sonos 5s, would be overkill. But what type of engineer would I be if I didn't engage in an empirical study to let my audience know if this type of setup makes sense for that steep of a price point? So let's dive right into it. Sonos has always positioned its products to be more than just audio components. They want to incorporate their speaker lineup into your day-to-day -day life by providing an easy way to get high quality networked audio into every room of your home. By and large, they have succeeded, making their products nearly ubiquitous in multiple rooms across homes all over the globe. And with Sonos's design shift towards a more streamlined, minimalistic aesthetic, it further reinforces their desire to be known as a more lifestyle-based audio company whose product offerings can take a more prominent and visible place in your home. And although they've largely succeeded in this effort to place individual Sonos speakers in your rooms, Sonos is now eager to gain more home theater market share as well. In order to do this, they've decided to bifurcate their soundbar offerings so that customers could feel that there is a Sonos product solution, whether they're looking for a more budget option or a more high-end option. If you have a TV smaller than 49 inches, or if you're more budget or space conscious, the Sonos Beam at $399 is for you. If, however, you have a TV 49 inches or larger, or if you want to experience a more immersive soundstage, the Arc at $799 should be your choice. However, you don't have to stop there. If you wanted a far superior bass response and a more distinct separation of mids and highs, you could add the excellent, albeit eye-wateringly expensive, $699 Sonos Subgen 3. And check out my review here if you want to see the details. You could theoretically go even further with your upgrade by adding a pair of Sonos One SLs. Or if you want it to be even more ostentatious and you have a barrel of money that you were looking for a reason to burn anyway, then you could also pair some Sonos 5s to this setup. This, in theory, will provide even more distinct sound isolation and even better, more pronounced sound directionality. So even if you're starting with the more budget-oriented Sonos Beam option at $399, it can involve like proverbial Pokemon into a worthy home theater setup by introducing these other components. Stepping up to the next tier, using the Sonos Arc as the base of your setup, really takes the sound fidelity and sound immersion into the stratosphere, especially if you continue down this Sonos upgrade path. Even though these components individually can be utilized as top tier standalone pieces, with the exception of the Sonos Sub, setting them up together through the revamped Sonos app is a snap. You initially add the Sub and surrounds independently to the Sonos ecosystem. Once each of the individual components have been added and set up, you then associate the surrounds and Sub to the soundbar of your choice. Once this association occurs, you may begin the calibration process through unfortunately the iOS only true play functionality. I think this choice to only have true play supported by iOS is a bit short sighted by Sonos, considering the population of Android devices that are out there. While I can understand their reluctance, considering the microphone placement on Android devices can vary wildly from device to device, Sonos should pick some of the more high profile models like the Galaxy or the Note or even the Google Pixel, and at the very least support those. This omission is particularly disappointing considering the discernible impact that the true play calibration provides, especially when you're adding surround speakers. The beauty of True Play, especially in this configuration with the added surround speakers, is that it does a great job of tailoring the sound profile specifically to where you will be listening to the music or movie. The calibration begins by sending out audible tones after you've decided on the location of your preferred listening position. <laughs> Once the system understands where you are in relation to its speakers, TruePlay then asks you to define the room by waving your phone around into every part of that space. This process really helps create a bespoke sound signature specific to where you like to sit, the room's dimensions, and its acoustics. I've had more expensive receivers try to do this thing in the past, and they were never quite good enough to my liking where I thought it made a big enough difference to the listening experience. So TruePlay is really doing a good job here. If you have an Android device, you can still calibrate basic individual settings like loudness, EQ, bass level, surround sound level, and so on, but I don't think it provides anywhere near the level of tailored specificity that the TruePlay does. So I hope Sonos addresses this for Android users because they're really missing out. 
I set up both the beam and the arc with each of the surround speakers and the sub in the respective rooms they were in. For reference, the arc was parked in the middle of the short wall of my rectangular shaped 15 by 30 foot family room while the beam was in my 10 foot by 10 foot square office. Both rooms have eight foot tall flat ceilings. Like I mentioned, the true play calibration really makes a huge difference to the sound profile, especially once everything is paired together. When I first tested the beam by itself, after calibrating it with true play, I could legitimately say the true play impact was barely discernible. Tuning the room now with the one SLs and the sub incorporated into the setup made a vast improvement to the sound separation and did a much better job of enveloping me within the sound stage. With the arc, adding the full complement of surround sound pairs to the setup along with the sub really refined the sound stage, giving you a more clear and distinct directionality. The arc on its own already does a great job with simulating positional audio especially when you can leverage Dolby Atmos. When paired with these surrounds, however, it really allows the arc to focus on the front and upward firing aspect of its soundstage, and it relegates most of the heavy lifting for the left, the right, and the rear sounds to the surround speakers. This was especially true for the more muted soundscapes and the quieter, more subtle moments in the movies and TV shows. Adding the surround speakers really highlights and pronounces the individual sound locations to more fully envelop the listener. Sonos did the engineering necessary to really leverage the individual capabilities of their speakers and then meld them seamlessly seamlessly into a surround sound setup that does a great job of complementing each other and ultimately enhancing the overall listening experience. For many, their issue is going to be the relatively steep price point that Sonos is asking you to pay for all of this harmonious soundscape. And my thought on it is, are you more of a Mac person or more of a PC person? And before you go, wait, when did this turn into a computer review? Just Follow me along on the analogy for a minute. I would say that if you're willing to research and find individual components like Dolby Atmos receivers, Atmos compatible speakers and subwoofers, and you enjoy the effort of finding the best deals for individual parts, or if you want the flexibility of many, many options, then you would probably make out better going the customized home theater route like a PC builder would be when building his or her rig. However, if you just want the best out of the box experience and you want to do one-stop shopping with components you know will just work flawlessly with no hassles, then a Sonos setup like this much like buying a Mac, is probably right for you. Sonos is basically mimicking Apple's blueprint by creating a premium, self-contained product ecosystem that's engineered to work amazingly well with each other, but doesn't always play nicely with other components that are non-Apple, or in this case, non-Sonos. There are, however, drawbacks to the setup though, which are inherent to a majority of Sonos' product line. With the exception of the Move, the Sonos products have always had minimal or no Bluetooth connectivity. For this price point though, you figure Sonos would allow some connectivity via Bluetooth to other devices, but that's not the case. If you have an Apple device, you can still add these speakers via AirPlay, but again, this ignores a huge swath of people who don't own Apple products and where Bluetooth connectivity would have made a huge difference. For me, another huge drawback is the fact that there's only one HDMI input, whether it be ARC if you have the beam or eARC if you have the ARC. This really limits the options you have in terms of connections to your audio setup. The number of HDMI inputs on your TV will ultimately end up being your bottleneck in terms of how many devices you're gonna be able to connect. Pass through HDMI inputs even one extra HDMI input would have been a welcome addition on either one of these soundbars. Another big drawback is that Sonos doesn't actually currently support the DTS audio codec. Now, this may be a marketing partnership with Dolby to ensure that people exclusively utilize Atmos. But again, if you're buying into a system at this price range, you don't want to limit yourself to only 50% of the available codecs in the marketplace. Now, this may not be a big deal for many outside of those who still buy Blu-ray 4K disc, but it's still a pretty big exclusion. And finally, the feature crippling for Android users is just a flat out plain bummer. And again, I get it considering the open source nature of the Android platform, but to ignore some of the most high profile devices in the marketplace and not let them use your killer true play functionality is just a huge miss by Sonos. Even with all that said though, the beauty of what Sonos has done here is allow the standalone parts to be good enough that if you decided to stop at just the beam or the arc by itself, it would be a worthy addition to your home theater. By allowing for expansion and a certain level of modularity, they've created a system that can grow with their customers. You want better separation? Add some Sonos 1s. You have some cash to throw around? Add some Sonos 5s. You want better boomier bass? Add the Sonos Sub. You can upgrade as your taste and budget really dictate. Bottom line though, for the full setup, you can't go wrong, especially for those who just want a virtual plug and play experience. All the individual Sonos components are attractive, unlike the blocky design of typical home theater componentry, that some consider to be eyesores. The acoustics here are phenomenal and rival much more expensive systems, and the ease of setup is unparalleled as it always is for Sonos. The app is a breeze to use and navigate, and the true play functionality is a godsend 
that gets the most out of the system as long as you have an iOS device that can leverage it. If you're looking to get into a first class home theater system and aesthetics are as important to you as acoustics, or if you can't or aren't willing to drill holes and run speaker cable to set up a home theater and you can get over the sticker shock of its price, this surround sound setup from Sonos are excellent options. So please check out my other Sonos reviews here and subscribe to the channel. I'll check you out next time. Peace.